Welcome to New Possibilities. I speak truth to power without fear. So for this video, I wanna talk about the protests that are happening all around the country on college campuses. You know, you have young people, courageous young people that are protesting against the genocide in Gaza. And I have nothing but respect for those brothers and sisters protesting around the country on our colleges and campuses they are an example of what needs to be done. Right now, there is genocide going on in Gaza. About 85% of people in Gaza have been displaced as a result of this conflict. 14,000 children have died in Gaza as a result of the actions of the Israeli government. 34,183 people have been killed in Gaza at the hands of the Israeli. And 72% of the people killed in Gaza are women and children. And over 77,000 people have been injured. People are being deprived of the bare necessities that they need to exist, deprived of food, deprived of water, deprived of medicine. This is the situation going on right now. And many of these universities have invested in Israel. They are supporting Israel. You know, our federal government is pouring billions upon billions of dollars uh, into Israel, supporting the genocide in Israel. Despite all this rhetoric about how bad uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is, Biden and the rest of those spineless, punkified Democrats and Republicans are rallying behind Israel by putting their dollars uh, behind the, the terrorism. They are sponsoring state terrorism. That's what's happening right now. And the statistics that I cited are from Al Jazeera. I will post a link to that article in the description to this video. Another thing that has to be pointed out is a child is killed in Gaza every 10 minutes, according to the UN human rights chief. That is the situation that we're talking about right now. That's what's happening. And I commend those students that have the courage to do what many traditional civil rights organizations are not doing. They have the courage to take to the streets and protest against this uh, injustice that's going on in Gaza, against this genocide that's going on in Gaza. Now I've heard people talk about, well, what are you gonna do? Like, and that's basically speaking in general terms to civil rights organizations and others. Like, what are you going to do You gonna if you support these, you know, the uh, people in Palestine? That's going to affect your funding and all that kind of stuff. Well, no civil rights organization should be for sale. It's all about principle over politics. It's about consciousness over contributions. That's what it's about. Civil rights organizations are supposed to be the conscience of the nation. And you can't be a conscience of the nation if your views are for sale, if your positions are for sale. And what's happening over there is a prime example of discrimination. What's happening over there is a prime example of oppression, of exploitation, of genocide. and. I was watching on the news the other day, um, this person from the Anti-Defamation League, and they were talking about how Jewish students feel threatened and all that kind of stuff on campuses as a result of these protests going on. And you have some people uh, labeling these protests as anti-Semitic. And as far as I'm concerned, that is nothing but propaganda. As far as I'm concerned, that is what Elijah Muhammad referred to as trignology. That's what these people are trying to use, trignology on the people. They are trying to gaslight the people. The fact of the matter is most of the people that are participating in these protests are nonviolent. Most, if not all of these protests are nonviolent. 
The people that are actually violent are the police. The people that are actually violent are the pro-Israeli uh, counter-protesters that I have seen on campus using racial slurs, making, you know, making all kinds of despicable and uh, provocative uh, statements, attacking protesters. That's what I've seen uh, some of these pro-Israeli people on campus doing trying to provoke violence so that they can uh, label the movement as violent and, uh, you know, try to undermine the um, movement for justice and the movement to end uh, genocide in Gaza. That's what they're doing. And the other thing is this, they're trying to label people as anti-Semitic for participating in these protests and for speaking out against what's going on in Israel. We, we are not anti-Semitic. The protesters are not anti-Semitic. We are anti-colonization. Uh, we are anti-occupation. We are anti-discrimination. We are anti-genocide. That's what the people are protesting against. They don't have any issue with somebody's religion or somebody's uh, belief system when it comes to you know, God and you know, their, their, the way they practice their faith. It is about the oppression of other human beings. That is what the masses of the people oppose. The other thing is this, I wanna stress the importance of civil disobedience. You don't bring attention to issues by simply um, complying with what the powers that be want you to do. You know, marching when they tell you to march within the confines of what they tell you to do. That is not a protest. Protests often cause on civil disobedience. We saw this during the civil rights movement. They said the same things about Martin Luther King Jr. and the civil rights protesters when they were marching against segregation in this country, when they were marching for voting rights in this country, when they were marching for the right to an education a basic education, marching and, and protesting for basic bare necessities. Those protests were called lawbreakers. They were told that they were breaking the law when they sat at this, uh, the lunch counters. They were told that they were breaking the law, like Rosa Parks told that she was breaking the law and arrested for sitting in the front of the bus and refusing to give up her seat. There comes a time when it's time for civil disobedience. There comes a time when you have to do what is necessary to disrupt the status quo. And that's exactly what these young people are doing with their encampments, and I commend them. Because otherwise, if people didn't participate in civil disobedience, there would not be attention to this issue. It is time to bring attention to the issue. It is time for action. And I commend these young people for doing what the politicians are too afraid to do. You know, many of these politicians are bought and bossed. They do what they are told. They don't have any conscience. They blow with the wind. They go with the direction of their, their funders. And you know, it's just outrageous. So I commend these young people. I support these young people. And it's time for us, the larger uh, group of uh, progressives, to rally behind these students and to support this cause. We have to divest from occupation. We have to divest from apartheid. We have to divest, divest from genocide. And that's what's going on. We need to divest from you know, in terms of uh, the colleges, in terms of the, the companies, in terms of uh, the Congress, they need to divest from Israel because Palestinian lives, like all other lives, matter.